the Hellgast dream was one of vengeance, wrath, and conquest. It promised the reunification of a broken nation, the whole of Alpha Centauri, and the removal of Earth as a power that could ever again dictate the place of others in the universe. The realization of this dream depended on two things from the Hellgast nation, a single hand, heart, and soul to drive its citizens into zealotry, and a gun in the hand of every available man, woman, and child. The zealotry was provided by scholar Vasari. The guns came from Stahl Arms. Once one of the largest defense contractors in the Hellgast Empire, Stahl Arms was a critical supplier and component of that state's military industrial complex. Its vast scale made it essential to Hellgast ambitions, affording the company immense power within even the highest levels of political and military leadership. Johann Stahl, the corporation's CEO, was a close advisor to Autark Vasari, and Stahl Arms functioned at times more akin to a faction within the Hellgast government, and even operated its own private military. Founded by Kage Stahl, during the early days of the Hellgast nation, Stahl Arms worked closely with Vasari on Helgen as the Autark consolidated his power across the planet. But with first-hand knowledge of the growing corruption, hypocrisy, and cruel ambitions within the government, he attempted to use his company's influence to block Vasari's ascent. His efforts were shut down by the members of the Hellgast military, and Kargistal died a disgraced and forgotten man. At the time of his death, his corporation had long since passed to his son, Johann Stahl, who had shared his father's disdain for the members of the Hellgast government, not for their brutal, fascist methods, which he would also come to employ, but for the power and wealth such tactics had earned them. He came to resent the military leadership especially, whom he perceived to be of lesser intellect and capability. Only Vasari seemed to have earned Stahl's respect, if not devotion, and he worked to maintain the Autarch's favor and trust. Under Johann Stahl's chairmanship, Stahl Arms began developing weapons designed to complement those produced by Vasari's own corporation, rather than compete directly against it. The company became associated with enormous manufacturing volumes, efficient assembly lines, and a specialty in mass-produced, reliable firearms. This focus on lower-end weaponry earned the company a niche within Hellgas defense contractors that was quickly exploited. Autark Vasari, likewise, began to utilize Stahl Arms as part of a counterbalance to the power of the military, and Johann specifically as an agitator who would foment conflict and competition within the upper Hellgast leadership. Stahl's political acumen was enough that he recognized and resented being used in this way, but nevertheless felt it suited his long-term goals. The partnership between Vasari and Stahl grew and evolved, an arrangement that benefited both sides. By the outbreak of the Second Extrasolar War, Johann Stahl had a seat on the Hellgast Senate, and every soldier that stepped off the dropships onto the surface of Vector was carrying a brand new STA-52 assault rifle. The contract awarded to Stahl Arms to provide the standard issue firearm to all Hellgast infantry solidified the company's dominant position within the defense industry, and its ties to Vasari made it politically untouchable. Its failure to conquer Vector was a disaster for the Helgen Empire, which in the aftermath now faced imminent counter-invasion. But the course of the war was to the extreme benefit of Stahl Arms. Uninvolved in the planning of the Vector operation, Johan was isolated from its fallout while his well-known and long-standing criticism of military leadership highlighted him as a potential reformist figure. As the Helgen population was conscripted and mobilized to defend their planet, the power of Johann Stahl grew with each new vehicle, firearm, or bullet manufactured by his corporation. Vasari's death at the hands of the Interplanetary Strategic Alliance removed from the Hellgast power structure the overarching authority that had kept its internal factions in place. 
Admiral Orlok, a senior commander in the Helgast military, was appointed Autark. But his legitimacy was challenged, and his base of support did not extend beyond the nation's military apparatus. Orlok was repeatedly confronted by Stahl in front of the Senate, signaling his intentions and encouraging uncertain members of the government to take his side. The power struggle within the Helgast state came to a head during the hunt for ISA insurgents on Helgen, abandoned on the planet after their own disastrous counter-invasion. Prominent failures by both the conventional Helgen military and Stahl Arms private military forces to contain these insurgents had weakened the position of both factions and forced a confrontation. When Chairman Stahl refused to deliver weapons ordered by the Helgast Empire, orders were issued for his arrest and the nation effectively fell into civil war. Both on their homeworld and in orbit, Helgast forces loyal to either Orlok or Stahl began firing on one another. Unable to match the scale of the conventional military, Stahl's objective was to decapitate its leadership. Associated mainly with less advanced weaponry, the Stahl Corporation had nevertheless never fully abandoned its more exotic research. During the Second Extrasolar War, it had successfully transitioned from plasma-based arc weapons to far more destructive petrocyte-based technology. Several applications derived from this material were developed in total secrecy, giving Stahl's forces a decisive edge. Yet, it was this new technology, the one intended to finally, decisively achieve the Helgast dream that would bring about its complete annihilation. During the fighting in orbit, the flagship of Chairman Stahl's fleet, the Kage, was destroyed, and the detonation of its petrocyte arsenal ignited a chain reaction within Helgen's atmosphere. The effects on the planet were apocalyptic, an event that would become known as the Terracide. What remnants of Stahl arms that had survived, its hardened facilities and off-world assets, were liquidated during the ISA-imposed peace that followed. Its employees and soldiers joined the last survivors of Helgen as they finally returned to Vector, not as conquerors or liberators, but refugees. Stahl Arms was disbanded. At the height of its success, Stahl Arms was an empire within an empire. Tens of millions of workers and soldiers, cadres of industrialists and innovators, all in the service to one man's dream. And like all empires too powerful to be destroyed, it evolved. In the decades that followed the Terracide, while the new Helgen Republic committed itself to peace and amity, a shadow government formed in its recesses. The upper leadership of this hidden state was a grand reunion of old veterans, zealots, and Stahl employees, a black hand that aimed to grasp the reins of state. And its head was the last of the old guard and the claimant to the Helgast dream. The Templin Institute investigates the nations, factions, and organizations of alternate worlds. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to join the Templin Institute, consider pledging to our Patreon page. Along with increased security access, you'll be able to vote in polls to determine future topics, get custom wallpaper every week, and receive some other exclusive rewards.